So, hello everyone, my name is Kaku, and welcome. This is going to be a video about how to draw digit raised legs, which are pretty much those feline like legs that you usually see on anthropomorphic characters. Um, they are really, you can use them on any, it's just more common in feline characters. So, uh, this is a video obviously about furries. If you are not into that, I'm sorry. But it is what it is, and uh, I just thought there, there is a distinct lack of, of information on how to draw these properly, and I feel it's unjustified. There should be more content out there, and after thinking about it for a while, I decided to do them myself. So uh, I don't claim to be an expert, but I should know at least a little bit that can help you out. So, without delay, let's get started with this. And the first thing I, I want to mention is when you're talking about furries, furry scale. I'm sure you saw a, a meme about this in some point. So, here you have humans. Let's just draw real human skeleton like person here. Um, this is just. This is gonna be um, handy later. Well, let's just draw this person here. So, like doing this. Oh, they're like doing this. So, arm, arm. No, those arms look, look quite right. Yeah, arm, arm. There we go. So, this is a human. That doesn't look nice. It doesn't have to. Uh, after all, this is a tutorial, and if I try to draw everything extremely pretty and everything right, this is going to take a while, and here um, I don't know. I'm going to draw an animal cat. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, so here, back, and then you have the hind legs um, that do this thing here, and you have the shoulder here, and then the front leg, the front paws, or something usually like this, and you have a bunch of fluke down here. Mm. Add comes up, let's just do that kind of something like this, here, and of course the tail. Here you have a human, here you have a cat, I drew the cat really big, let's fix that. Okay, I think this should be enough. Um, so. As uh, an artist of this type, you usually will be drawing somewhere in between those two. We're not drawing animals, which we're not drawing humans either. And up to around this point, just it's because it's not considered furry at all. I think somewhere around here is like kimonomimi, which is Japanese, and I'm not sure if that's how you say it, but uh, it's those people with like cat ears. <laughs> and I'll tell you, uh, there you go. Um, and and if you go past this point, uh, and there is a threshold, but around here is probably like Zootopia, which is pretty much animals just standing like humans and acting like humans. It's pretty borderline. And after this, it's just like um, ferals with some sort of human nature, but it's very very subtle. And so we are restrained on this part where. It's not human and it's not animal, it's something in between. I try to keep my style around this part, maybe a little bit towards animal, but everyone does it differently and it's fine. You just gotta keep in mind where you are taking influence from and make things consistent. Because the worst part is when you're drawing something you don't fully understand and it doesn't look quite right. So uh, these few videos are gonna be making are meant to just tackle this few parts that most people do change and make sure that you understand what you're changing and where to inspire the change from. So without delay this one is going to be focusing on this part and this part. So we're gonna fuse this two together and make something new and I'll be focusing on a very middle ground here but I will give you some examples of here and here which are gonna help you out a little bit. But again, uh, this is something I need to put out before we start. 
this is not going to help you suddenly draw better. What I'm giving you here is just some information on how to do things properly, how to find your way and how to go about your drawing. I'm not going to give you uh, a step-to-step -step process. This is more like theory and theory without practice is nothing. So if you are watching this and you do not want to practice at all, I don't think this video is going to work for you. Now, uh, if you do want to practice, I, I will give you some assignments by the end of this video and I think those are going to help you at least a little, but we can talk about them later. So. Uh, let's get away from this and so first of all I'm gonna draw fully human here let's give this guy um, let's make it a girl okay so here so we have this notion here say she's raising her butt a little bit mm. actually let's not do that let's make it more normal uh, more standing straight so uh, she's leaning her weight on this leg so her hips are gonna be slightly higher on this side uh, and then we have the leg here and voila the leg is fairly straight and this leg is not when you are raising your hips you tend to your other leg becomes uh, quote unquote uh, longer and that's because this leg starts lower, this leg starts higher, so this one's straight, this can't be straight, otherwise you, you, you end up with your foot down here, and the ground does not like <laughs> likely let you do that. So one leg is usually doing something like this, the other is straight, or maybe you could do like, hey, uh, it's the straight leg to the side, or maybe more like this, but it doesn't really matter. The, so let's go here make so shoulder shoulder okay we have a person and so what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna copy paste this and we're gonna go in a process this is how i did it and you don't actually have to do it my way i'm just gonna show you what was my process thought process behind this and the first thing i actually noticed here is this this legs are a little too, too, too small for the body so let's quickly fix this by giving it a stretch again uh, these are not meant to be pretty these are just for the sake of you understanding and so long as it gets the point across it's great by me it's great to me so let's give it a little bit of the leg here otherwise this character will be seriously skinny and i'm gonna erase just lightly on this one let me give one more pass. So now, uh, you remember here, let's go back to this. The cat leg here is actually, if you think of it like this, there is the hip joint and there is the knee, there is the ankle and there is the tip uh, of the, the foot. All these parts are really what contributes to the motion of the leg. And the cat has all of these, even if it seems, well, like it doesn't. Here's the hip, here's the knee, here is the ankle, and the foot is just longer, and the tip goes here. So the only difference is here you stand on your heels, here you stand on your tip of your foot. So that makes it so that it seems like it has one more bend, but it really doesn't. It's just the way it, you look at it. So we're gonna translate that into our character over here. So. Uh, if you draw the leg this way, let's see, uh, and then this way, let's just copy the leg and now we're gonna add the kind of cat leg here. So let's just, this looks really skinny but these are just construction lines. I would go over and add more mass to them. So let's just add this in and see how that looks. And that looks strange, doesn't it? So. First of all, what happened is your character became taller. Became taller only on its part. And this leg is no longer straight. It's more like straight and then here. And then your weight is gonna be here, but your center of mass is in the middle. So something went wrong. Let's try to figure this out. So first of all, uh, we want 
to at least that's my goal is to have this character have these different legs but it should retain the same not the same pose but the same feeling about the pose so we're gonna erase this again and let's try something different so first of all since uh this character is going to be have a lot more length here what I do is I shorten the length here and here just a little to compensate for that and that's gonna help you maintain the same height and not look strange so I make the tie a little shorter and you notice I'm not going straight anymore even though the weight is on this leg and I'm gonna show you why real soon so so now the calf is moving backwards and then you have the foot here and it stays like this I may have overdone this I think it should be a little bit longer on this side and on this side yeah I think this is more yeah not true and here this leg was already bent we're gonna bend it further so let's actually bend it this way so since this one is not receiving any weight it becomes technically longer and we have to compensate for that the way we do that is just by bending it more just a tiny bit but it should be enough here i'm doing some cross counter lines to just indicate where everything is going and like this so the leg is doing this then this and then this but it feels a little disconnected it doesn't feel wrong but now we have three motions and on human legs you have two usually which is two from this one and this one here you have this one this one and this one and that makes it strange so here we're gonna have to redraw the character because when your character has legs differently what usually happens is not only they get legs but they also get a tail and we're gonna incorporate the tail into the posing so that it can benefit from it as you I'm not sure if you know this but the tails on nature they are used to counterbalance weight and since we are dealing with that why not take it and use it so here is the same character somewhat and what I'm gonna do here is angle the hips a little bit more this is just to account for the tail that's gonna come out like this normally uh, people's hips are more straight down and women's I mean men's hips are more straight down and women's are more English backwards but I with ca characters that have this kind of legs I like to angle their hips just a tiny bit backwards and that is just gonna emphasize first this curve which makes it prettier but that's not the most important point but rather it's gonna balance for the fact that the tie is gonna be coming forwards a little so now that we have the character like this let's give the tie here oh and another point to mention is while the hips end up here the longer the thickest point is around does big like one third of the tie is where it usually gets the thickest and that helps to show dimension on the character if you do this as the, the thickest part the character just looks skinny and strange so let's not do that and here is the tie and then you have this leg here so this leg is not carrying the weight so it can be whatever it wants to be so same thing so here what we're gonna do is a little different you see we're gonna grab this and we're gonna make the same motion as you see on humans so here and here so this is going to just make the leg feel a little better and a little more familiar which is what we want we want it to feel the same as this and now the other leg that's supporting the weight is gonna be more like this so now you see the character seems to be a little off balance and that's because both legs are standing on this side and the head is on the middle but if you take in account of the tail suddenly this balances out with this and honestly this leg is too far out even so so let's make it a more natural pose by giving her like her, her the leg that's not supporting the weight 
or like this and standing here so you can have your weight away from the body because the tail pulls the body to the other way now if you don't want the tail to pull the body to the other way the tail is usually close to the body if it's doing its tail work it's if it's doing this counterbalance work then it's gonna be further away from the body and that just helps to make the character look more natural because it feels balanced it feels in control and with especially with feline characters this is really important because otherwise if the character doesn't look looks off balance it's not feline at all <laughs> like cats are, seem to always have this majestic sense of balance that people really like and if you want to make a character portray that they need to also have this sense of balance and so here we have a more dynamic version of this this isn't wrong it's just not um, how do I say it it's it doesn't feel right it feels like the character is squatting here it feels like the character is just standing and that is because of the gestures I mentioned before here we have three different motions here we only have two here and here and that may seem like it would make the, ca the drawing much more um, cartoony but so long as you follow these motions and you add some of the lines that indicate it your your eyes will follow them even if they if you don't realize they do and these lines can be on the shading or anything really but i will get to gesture and at a later date it's a very complicated topic and i want to focus on legs right now so we have the legs something like this and now I'm going to do some poses here just to give you a few examples of how it's done and per how I personally do it and then you can take your own conclusions. Um, another thing you should notice is while I do the legs this way you don't have to. This is fantastic anatomy. It's made up by me. I, I kind of created this way of drawing this part of the body but you don't have to do it my way you can create your own version for instance i draw four fingers and i don't draw the toe i don't think it looks good the toe usually on animals sticks out from the side and i think that looks strange so i take it off i can do that because i made it it's mine but with the with the toe like that you can add it in but also you can change the pose if you want you can change the the proportions for instance, I use more human proportions and I try to keep the characters more human looking but if you want to go deeper into the animal side, you can actually do that by making the legs more animal-like and I'm going to show you an example just in a little bit. This is one, let's see. Uh, so let's try to make a character more on the animal side. So the first thing you're going to notice is the body is going to be smaller because, well, animals are more compact in a way. <clears throat> humans are elongated cats are not well long cat is but it doesn't count uh, so uh, usually you're gonna have a lower stature so bigger heads smaller body and let's see so this is the body and then what I notice a lot of people do and this is mostly on Japanese versions of these characters is that uh, the the drawing? I mean, the the thighs they get really thick, and then the leg goes shorter, and then shorter. This uh, I think I overdid this a little. The hips should be a little bit smaller, and the thighs as well. But it should be thicker than thinner and thinner still. This is one way to do it because it looks more cat-like. So if you think of it like this, this is going backwards in space, this is going backwards in space. Uh, what this does is, let's go back to this first one, is it creates uh, an anatomy that more resembles this. This is thick, this is thinner, and this is thinner still. Whereas here we have almost even and then thinner. So by creating this kind of thing, you can indicate more closely to this side and 
at the same time you can keep this uh, planche grenade planche grenade is when you stand on your heels and digit grenade is when you stand on your on the toes so you can keep it planche grenade and still adding animal elements which would be on this side I'll, I will do one example on it but this is not the point of the tutorial because this is about digit grade legs which are more of a problem if you want plenty grade it's just human pretty much you add a few details and I will go into those soon so so let's say you have this character and instead of having uh, so you can do more like this and this and then you can have the the foot is going to be even longer but it's standing on the heel just like a person would and that's fine and i think this is way too long let's fix this for a second hold on make this smaller and pull this in uh, yeah i think it looks better uh, so you can make the character stand on the heels and yet keep some animal traits to it and that's okay uh, again this is really how you want to do it but right now we are focusing on how this works so let's go back to it and I'll do one more maybe one of the character leaning forwards I think this is one of the interesting poses that you can't do with human characters and you can do with characters with legs like this and a tail it's just that um, they can lean forwards keep the hips like this and have their legs like this which would be extremely imbalanced but since they are lean all the way here but the tail is going to be usually straight to forwards or, or downwards and this gives them the balance they need to lean forwards like this and maybe this character is preparing to, to pounce forwards like tense and so it's like yeah i'm gonna catch you <laughs> kind of like a kitty about to jump or something and this is fine so long as you take in consideration that you have to balance things out if this is coming this way this has to come this way and the, and then the outcome has to be somewhere in the middle where the foot is standing so this foot should be around here and this foot should be around here since the, sh the weight is shared between both legs and so this creates a balanced pose if you have something pushing to one side you have the counterweight with something else or put the center of balance on where you are standing and pressing your weight because if you are standing say you are leaning forwards and but your foot is here and your other foot is here Notice how immediately the character looks like he's falling, because here is the where your weight is sitting, and here is where some of the, your weight is going. So it creates this movement to here, and makes your character fall on his face, which is not good for the character. Anyways, so mm, another thing I should mention is uh, the details a little, which. Uh, I like to make the ankles really pronounced. I'm gonna draw one in more detail here. I like to make the ankles really show because uh, they are pronounced in cats, and I think it just creates a nice visual guide, visual landmark for people to realize. So here we have the square area, which is the the tip of the foot, which should not be confused with the toes. Remember, while your character stands somewhat tiptoes it does not stand on his toes it has this platform here and then the toes come here if you forget this part and you draw the toes right away it looks really wrong <laughs> it's like this so look your character looks like it has no foot uh while it this part is really small on cats i like to make it a little bigger because this gives you a better footing as a human because while you are an anthropomorphic character it has to have some sense it has to to be able to stand so the way you make your character look realistic or rather believable because it's not realistic is simply to make 
it believable, make it seem real, make and then your brain will, will accept it. If it looks 3D, then it, it 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 is probably real. Your brain doesn't question that. So here is somewhat rendered version of it. I think, and then we can go into the pulse. I like to have this kind of shape for the for the pad. I think it's shaped. For some reason looks really good and here you have the big pad which has like a little dimp here a little dimp here a little dimp here this all connects to the same thing and then you have like for me i like to have two toes in the front and two on the sides just slightly okay it's kind of like a claw i just like how this looks uh if you want to add the thumb it should be around here it's really small uh, because evolutionary tra it's kind of uh, they don't use this at all and as they evolved this part became more important than the, the little toe and so it got smaller and this part kept growing because it was needed or something like that I don't know I, I'm, not, I'm not a biologist <laughs> by all means uh, so here you have the pole pads and I'll go into more detail a little bit about this on the toes but like I like to have this kind of structure so it's this sort of shape with two here on the front and one on the sides I think this looks pleasing to me and you are free to do your own you can do more human like so you would have four here uh, and then it scales like this which would mean there is a big toe here and there are smaller toes over here you can even add the fifth somewhere around here and that is up to you completely i'm not gonna poke you around and say hey you should do my way because my way is right i think you should decide for yourself and try out things to see if they work so uh on the toes it's another important thing to realize is that first the light comes here and then there is the pad so the pad i like to give this a little bit leaf here and then this because here you have uh, a joint that will move and so here you can do it something like this and then on the toes I like to just add in the, the smaller one since this is how I do it and then a bigger one here from this view I think it's enough detail and then there is the tendons that come up here to the leg I'll, I'll draw this in the front so you can see it better and so here here let's give this kind of a donut shape <laughs> so this is going like that in the space and then you have the, the toes they should be something like this and comes down comes down makes let's make it square so it's easier to understand in space and always use this if you are unsure how something is going to protect in space draw a bunch of squares then round then round them off. Um, so here there should be tendons that come up the leg, and it's important to show them because they adapt to your foot. Otherwise, your foot's just like this thing. <laughs> and it's an important landmark on feet in general, and it makes it look more realistic. So do it. I like to add a little indication of this joint here and here. I'm not sure if this would show realistically or if this is a thing on cats i just like to put it there it makes it look a little more like an, a human ankle even though the, the actual ankle is here and i like to make this really pronounced just because i made that one a little less pronounced than this one so that that way you still feel this is the ankle and then this is just like a little bump that turns um again this feels like uh, I like to, to think of my character as, as mechanic in a way this helps me figure out what can I swear if you think there is a cylinder here and then it just projects out like this and then another piece connects to it something some, somewhere like this and moves down I know this joint does not move like this but it doesn't matter so long as you can visualize it properly it can help you understand what you are drawing and if you are drawing something you do not understand i highly recommend you stop doing that 
Instead of trying to draw finished pieces on something you do not understand fully, try to do studies on, on it until you understand it better so you can draw faster and you can draw more confidently and it's going to show through in your art. If you're drawing things you do not fully understand, you are going to be doing a lot of guesswork and it's going to be frustrating to draw. So don't do that. Or at least try to minimize it as much as you can. Pick an area that you think is difficult and do some studies on it until it does, it's no longer dip, that difficult and, and you can move to something else. And so here you can see what I meant by that. It's like this piece moves, this piece moves, this piece moves. If you know where your character's body bends, you can easily make it do whatever pose you want so long as you can project it in space, which is an ability and it's something you have to practice a lot. So I think I covered all of the aspects. Let me think if there's something else. Mm, I don't think so. So let's go to the last part and I mentioned this. Assignment. You're gonna go like, oh my god, I, I'm not gonna do homework. <laughs> I'm not gonna do homework for a guy on YouTube. And you're right, you don't have to. Uh, honestly though, if you just watch the video and you don't do anything, what, what help is that? You, you're understanding something superficially, but you're not understanding it fully. You can think you understand, but until you can reproduce it without a problem, you do not understand something. And especially with visual arts, like, well, drawing. So what you are going to do, if you want to follow this assignment, is find 10 or 20 or 50 or how many you want to do Start with like five, see if you can get the hang of it, and then do some more. Um, find some pictures of people standing, or people crouching, or people doing some action. And then you're gonna try to find if you need them, and I highly recommend you to at least have a three or four just hanging around. You, could, you can paste your pictures on your canvas like have them here and then draw here, it's fine. So long as you have those reference images, never draw without them until you really do understand what you're drawing. Because those reference images are gonna be guides when you don't know what to do. So you reference reality and then you adapt reality to what you're drawing. So assignments, you get a few pictures, poses if you will, and you are gonna draw the character's legs. You can draw the entire body if that feels easier for you or you can just do like a cross section and just focus on the legs it's fine either way and you're gonna find the character's legs and what you're gonna do is you first draw them as human so you can understand the pose better so let's draw some random pose maybe this person is preparing for battle she's she's like really she's like really tense and stuff and like the body's probably leaning forwards and then you're gonna grab this and you're gonna redraw you're not gonna draw over it that's not what we want to do here you're gonna redraw on the same structure just with the different leg type and this is gonna help you not only learn this but learn how to adapt things in your brain how to see things and then use them for yourself. You don't, you're not copying anything, you're just referencing it and then taking parts of that to help you draw what you want. So here you're gonna have your character tense. Uh, I think I'm gonna, and you can change the pose if you want a little, if it's gonna show the emotion that the pose is trying to portray better. So here, the leg is supposed to be more towards this but i brought the leg more facing forwards because i think this would show better and it did it looks tense just like it should look here but here we have this is great legs here we have normal legs and i think that's gonna be it for today make this do this assignment if you will and I will be creating a discord channel for this kind of purpose and if you do the assignment do all the do all 10 of them join up and show it to me now 
I will give you some tips on it. I think this is going to be a nice way to build a little community around learning. And if you want to join, feel free to ask me questions or anything, and I will be making more videos like this soon. Hopefully, this can become something I do every day. Not every day, but like at least once a week. And I can teach you some of the aspects I find important on drawing. So the next one is probably going to be the head and how to, again, fix some aspects of the human head and some aspects of the furry head or the animal head rather and create something unique you like and this is probably going to be really hard but i hope we can break through with it so thanks everyone and if you like this video give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more content like this one and thank you goodbye <laughs>